Following induction of general endotracheal anesthesia, the patient is carefully turned to the prone position on a radiolucent table. The operative table options include either a standard table with chest rolls placed to maintain lumbar lordosis or a Jackson-type table that places the hips in extension. Either option must maintain lumbar lordosis. The attachment of the minimal access retractor device is placed on the side opposite the planned side for the T-lift as cranially as possible to minimize obstruction to the surgeon and the fluoroscopes. Neuromonitoring with spontaneous EMGs and somatosensory evoke potentials is set up at the head of the table next to anesthesia. After the patient is draped, a 22-gauge spinal needle is inserted into the skin directly over the ipsilateral disc space of interest. The needle is used to identify the trajectories of the screw placement and to ensure an accurate extent of the incision. For a single-level procedure, a 2.5-centimeter skin incision is centered over this point. A K-wire is directed using fluoroscopic guidance toward the facet complex with a lateral to medial trajectory. To minimize risk of neural injury, the wire is passed only through the fascia and muscle. Serial dilators are then passed over the wire to develop a muscle-splitting surgical channel. A properly sized tubular retractor is then passed over the dilators and is attached to the table frame via a flexible articulated frame. From this point forward, the procedure may be performed using either an operative microscope or an illuminated tube with loop magnification based on surgeon preference. A total facetectomy is now performed using either a high-speed drill or bayoneted osteotomies. The initial cut is made across the medial aspect of the inferior facet, disarticulating it from the superior lamina. The synovial membrane is then separated from the ligamentum flavum using curved curettes. Care must be taken as these tissues are in continuity with each other and form a single plane in the lateral recess. The inferior facet may then be removed using a pituitary rongeur. The remaining superior facet is then partially drilled and removed in a stepwise fashion using a kerosen rongeur. When using a high-speed drill, care must be taken to avoid breaching the inferior pedicle. All the bone removed is morselized and saved for use as graft material later in the case. A ligamentum flavum covering had been left intact to protect the dura mater and nerve roots during the facetectomy. This covering is now removed in a stepwise fashion using kerosen rongeurs to expose the traversing and exiting nerve roots. Epidural bleeding frequently occurs during this step of the procedure and may be controlled using bipolar cautery and thrombin-soaked gel foam. Though it is unnecessary to expose the entire exiting nerve root, it is important to be aware of both the root's location underneath the superior pedicle and the amount of space between the medial edge of the exiting nerve root and the lateral margin of the traversing root. At this point in the procedure, if the patient has symptomatic central stenosis, the tubular retractor may be angled to perform a more medial laminotomy. If necessary, bilateral decompression can be achieved in this fashion through undercutting the spinous process and drilling away the contralateral lamina. Frequently, posterior osteophytes will need to be removed to optimize access for the discectomy. With the traversing and exiting nerve roots protected, a complete discectomy is now performed using a number 15 blade to incise the annulus and thoroughly remove all nuclear material. The success of the fusion is dependent on thorough removal of all nuclear tissue, so time should be taken to visualize a complete and thorough discectomy. Following the discectomy, the inner space may now be distracted by creating a mirror 2.5 centimeter skin incision on the contralateral side, centered over the inner space. Percutaneous pedicle screws are then placed, and a rod is subfascially levered into place. The contralateral screws are tightened to a distracted position in order to create optimal space for the inner body device. 
If there is concern about contralateral neural element compression, then a direct decompression can be obtained by repositioning, wanding, the ipsilateral tubular retractor, or by placing a second tubular retractor through the contralateral incision. Once the optimal inner space distraction has been achieved, end plate preparation is performed using a series of down pushing curettes and end plate scrapers. A small retractor is used to protect the traversing nerve root, and the exiting nerve root may need to be slightly elevated if performing an L5 to S1 fusion. The cartilaginous end plates are then removed and the bony end plates are decorticated but left structurally intact.